Hi, uh, my name's John Bly. Uh, I'm the music worker at the centre here. Uh, and I've been asked by Phil just to give you a little bit of the background to the centre. Um, to do that, I need to tell you a little story. It won't take too long. Um, and it goes back about 20, 25 years um, when I was a young man and I got involved with the youth service. And I got together with a group of other young musicians and we were supported by a youth worker to um, establish our own rehearsal room in Rice Lane Community Centre. Now, we were always encouraged to take control of things and, and um, drive things forward. And so we came up with a plan and we approached the city council with it. And we, we went to the city council as a group of young musicians, young men and young women, and we were supported by our youth worker. And we put forward the proposal for a multimedia arts centre, which would be run by young people, for young people. And we did the costumes and we did the action plan and all that. And, and we presented it to two guys from the city council, two bureaucrats from the city council, which is what we called them at the time. Obviously now I work for the city council, we don't have the same. We don't have the same label. Um, and up until that point where we did the presentation to the two guys, I always really, really 120% believed in the vision that we had and that it could happen and that it was just there within our grasp. The look on the face of these two guys when we presented the costumes, which I believe, if I, if I recall correctly, came to about a million pound, right? The look of shock and horror on these people's faces kind of put pay to a lot of my um, idealistic and naive belief. But what it did do was show me that the system wasn't able to adapt as quickly as it should do to accommodate the dreams and the hopes of young people. Now tonight, Phil's already explained to you, is about the past, the present and the future. It's about young people's willingness to embrace the past. It's about their awareness of how important that is in the present, including things like the Beatles, which for some people is not the most fashionable thing in the world, believe it or not. And it's also about young people's desire, their passion, sometimes their naivety, but almost always that drive that people have when they're young and that belief in themselves and sometimes misplaced belief in the system, or at least that's what I thought. So anyway, Fast forward now to where we are, and if you look at the people gathered in this building, and there's a few people in particular I'd like to thank, and I hope, I probably I'm gonna miss some people out, but back in 2008, um, Steve Lamb came up with a not dissimilar plan to put this center on the map, and also to reinvigorate the kind of things that the youth service offered, and if you like, bring it up, to date in the 21st century. There's also been other people who, who, who were instrumental in keeping this place on the map. Brian O'Hara amongst them. Steve Lamb, as I've mentioned. But honestly, we wouldn't be where we are now without the passion and the drive of the man you've seen speaking up here and doing all his crazy rantings for the, the first half, which is Phil Windover. And I'd just like you to put your hands together for Phil, right? Because I've never seen anyone. Yeah, come on, give it up. There's been times in the past six months where Phil has drove me absolutely crazy. And he'll talk about 15 things at once and I can't multitask, I only take one thing on board at a time. But here we are, 20 years later, and the place that I'm standing in, and which I'm privileged to be a part of and the young people that I work with, who are also here tonight, putting in their effort and helping and becoming responsible members of the community and contributing to what we should be calling the cohesive society although at times it doesn't seem that cohesive. Here we are now in the present day in a multimedia arts centre run by young people, for young people, with the support of youth workers. So the lessons kind of come full circle for me. When I was a young man, idealistic and naive, I thought the system couldn't accommodate change, but I was wrong. What I learned was that the system does accommodate change, but it doesn't do it as fast as we want it to do. I think the responsibility of the people who work within the system, and that's all of us, that's workers, the officers, the politicians, and all the community activists, it's everybody's responsibility, is to 